You are live. Good evening, guys. Captain Greg DeBrule. CJ Adams. Talk and tackle. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to be going over some knots. I know it's uh, very popular, and there's a lot of knots out there, I would say. A lot of knots. And we're going to do we're gonna do our best to try to show you just some of the basics that we use. And, and it is, it's going to be a little bit difficult. We've been, we've been kind of practicing this for the couple of days. It's hard to... It, it's hard to show them. Uh, we're going to go step by step to do the best we can to uh, to show you how to tie them. And uh, of course, it's a it's difficult. We got a little bit of setup here, but uh, we're going to do the best we can to show you every way and every step to uh, to tie these certain knots. That's that's why I'm going to give you uh, CJ's home address. And if any of you would like to come down and and see it personally, uh, we'll do it personally. <laughs> we. If we ever did that, it would be 400 of them tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we'll give them yours. I'll give them yours right back at them. Anyways, uh, like we said, there's a lot of knots out there. Uh, hundreds and hundreds. You could uh, you could tie a simple overhand knot. You could tie your shoes. Uh, there's all certain knots. But uh, the the go-to knot that, uh, that everybody uses is your simple clinch knot. Uh, improved clinch knot. Well, what is that knot? What's the clinch knot? Well, that's the knot you've been trained your whole life called your fisherman's knot. And uh, I'll do my best to demonstrate, Morgan, you might have to come up a little closer. We're going to do the best we can, but you got your mono, okay, or whatever you got, you got your hook. All right, this is your improved clinch knot, clinch knot, your standard fisherman's knot. Can you get it, Morgan? Yeah, I got it. Through the hole, okay. Come up. Want me to hold it? Uh, no, I can do it. It's better off if I hold it. Just like that, take your, take your two fingers down the shank of the hook, hold it tight, okay? Now you're going to wrap. Take it. One, two, three, four, four, five, something like that. Take your tag end, and you see if you can see more. And there's a little loop down there that I made with the line. Yeah. Okay? Take your line, go through it, wet it a little bit. Always wet it. Always. It'll, it'll uh, the friction, and cinch that down, okay? That right there is your clinch knot, okay? Let me do it again. What do you think? Do do one more time. I was going to show you the improved clinch knot next, but uh, I think you did that fabulous. You did, yeah. yeah. That's better than you do during the season. <laughs> well, we have a long season. <laughs> yeah, I hope you could see that, folks. Yeah, okay. like we said, uh, we'll show you a couple different times. So clinch knot again through the hole. Pull up enough. Pinch it with your fingers, and then give it a twist. One, two, three, four. Five, something like that. You make that little loop, go through. Did I get it? Yep. Okay, wet it, and cinch it down. The wetting it on any knot is very, very important. That's your uh, that's your clinch. Now, there's something called an improved clinch. We'll show you that. It's a uh, similar similar concept, just one more step. Jake said that the, that your glasses don't work if they aren't over your eyes. <laughs> Jake, Jake, oh, you got something to say? Thank you, Jake. All right, back to knots. We can talk glasses that's, later. That's, let me tell you something. That's one of the reasons he, he's tying the knots, and I'm not because I can't see the damn thing. If it was up to me with a like an Albright on tie, tie and mono to braid, forget it. I'd starve to death. You know. Improved clinch. Okay, same concept. Through the hole there. Bring it up. Pinch it off, wrap again. One, two, three, four, five. Make that loop, go through it. Now instead of cinching it down, go back through the big loop you made, okay? Give it a little twist, wet it. Improve clinch, a little bit of a stronger knot. Um, like I said, I'm no genius. I don't know really why, the, what the, why they call it improved versus a clinch. I guess it's a little stronger, but... Uh, that's your improved. I'll show it one more time. You know, when I see you biting the, the tag end, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. We had a guy, he's probably watching us. I don't know, were you working on it? I don't think you were working on the store. And uh, we were going out bass fishing, and he was tying Oh, I know the story. I wasn't there. I wasn't oh, there, I wasn't I there I you told me. I wish I had a picture of it. <laughs> what he, he, had a, he, had a lure. he had a lure. He had a bucktail. We're bass fishing at night. And he was tying the bucktail, and we use at night for the bucktails. We use 130 pound test Andy line. They're not line shy, and the heavy line. Uh, 
tail. But the the heavy. So yeah. he was he was tying that thing off, and he had the tag end in his mouth, the 130 pound wrapped around his hand, and he had the hook, big 80 hook, holding with his pliers, and he's pulling it. Oh. I mean, he's pulling it, and it slipped off his pliers, and it went into his jaw with that 80 hook. And he comes up on the bridge of the boat, and a brunch coming down, and he says to me, Cap, and I turned around, I said, oh, my God. And it, was, it had the feathers and everything. He says to I me, see it. he says to me, just pull it out. Just pull it out. I'm saying, I'm not pulling it out, man. You know what I mean? I wish I had a picture of it, because it was pretty, I mean, the blood is coming down with the bucktail. I think it was a... Uh, I think it was a black and purple bucktail, so there was good contrast between the blood, oh, that's good. Yeah. The blood and, the, and the color, you know, yeah, but uh, I didn't think fast enough to get a picture, but he went down, but that's, I'll never forget, man, just, get, hold it out, don't worry, get forward, yank it. Oh, God. Do, uh, do you think it hurt right away? I think it hurt right right when he did it. I think it got his attention right away. I, th I bet you don't do it again. He was pulling, man, I'll tell you. Wow. I can see it. I can almost feel it. And watch you do that, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, that would be kind of, I mean, it would be kind of devastating, especially putting one of these babies. Yeah. <laughs> Just pull we have to leave now, folks. I'm sorry, i got to take CJ to the emergency room. No, no, because, it happens. Because I'm not pulling it out. If it happens, we're cutting it. We ain't going nowhere. Did uh, we mention who's filming tonight? Before we get any further, did we mention who's filming? We got yeah, a new, Morgan, yeah, we got a new film crew tonight. <laughs> so if there's any problem with the film crew, Morgan has been with us for two years, and I hear that I hear he's he's uh, ever so popular. I, well, he is very popular, <laughs> but I hear because he likes this, he's uh, he's going to put in an application for ESPN. Yeah. You know? ABC oh, too. ABC. Oh no, kidding. Mm -hmm. You might be the film boy. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're stuck on the Blackhawk for a while. You gotta say hi to people too. Who do we Chris have? Metzke. Chris Metzke. George Dowers. Chris Metzke. How are you, George? Chris Roman, Metzke. Roman's watching. He's Roman, getting... I hope you're feeling better, buddy. Right. I wanted to text you to see. He's just got. He's just done with that back operation, so. Text us and let us know how you're doing, Roman. Your buddy Moto's watching. Yeah. Moto, how are you, George? The clams came out great today. We're gonna go again. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll save some. For you, you can try when we uh, when you get down here in the spring. Lori's watching. Who is? Lori. Oh, Lori. Hi, Lori. Yeah, he's watching jo John. We got some John viewers. Blanchett. Yep. yep. Hi, John. Party John. Party John. John. Twenty nine. <laughs> it's coming up, John. It's coming up. Twenty nine. Can't reach that thirty, man. Can try. He's, he gets twenty nine all the time. John, you are good at getting twenty nine, but you struggle at getting number thirty. <laughs> Were you very good at math in high school? <laughs> Because I've I got to be honest with you, you're a hell of a guy, but you really suck cutting them fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one one more time with the improved clinch, uh, just to refresh everybody's memory again, okay? Tag end, through the hook, pinch it off, wrap, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Through that little one, and then you got that big one there, back through the big one. Give it a little cinch, there goes the hook in my cheek, wet it. Since you're down. Improved clinch. Okay? So the, the clinch, you're going through one time. Improved, after you go through that one time, you're going through the big one you make. Okay? Very important. Two things. That's the difference between the clinch and the improved clinch. Yes, sir. You, would you like to snip away? Now, now uh, that's your, those are your, uh, like I said, your basic fisherman's knots that everybody's taught raised on their whole life. Now we get into some... Uh, Want a snow one, or should I do a uni? You do the, no, you were going to do the, uh, the polymer, I thought. The polymer? You, you yeah, you've been, polymer. yeah, you've been doing the polymer your whole life. We, uh, you know, there's so many, there's so many knots. I mean, it's there incredible. Is. When we, when, you know, I've been fishing a long time, and we just, we seem to use what, what, what works. If it doesn't break, don't, don't fix it. The turtles, you know? yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The, uh, the polymer knot is a very, very popular knot. And we used it tuna fishing all the time. I mean, that's all we, all we did. Relax and listen to this for a second. Uh, but anyhow, to, to tie the polymer is uh, you take, you double up the line to begin with, okay? You double it up. You, you got to give yourself enough, too. Remember yeah, you, that. You got to give yourself enough of a tag in there, okay? Uh, go, through, go through the hook, right? Then all you do is just tie an overhand knot. Tie an overhand knot. Okay, and now you're going to take that and you're going to go take the loop from the overhand knot. See it? Very easy. Simple knot. Very simple. And it, it's a simple guy doing it. I know it's. <laughs> and then you put the hook around it and pull it up 
okay, and then wet it and pull it. What the what that does, what that particular knot does, if you look at it, now you've got a double uh, line on that on your hook, okay. But that's a real simple knot, okay. But very very strong, very strong. You know, I I didn't use in in, in my career. I didn't use a lot of knots. We used this. We used what CJ showed you. Yeah. We used the snelling of the hooks. Yeah. You know, I used yeah. to snell up like all our codfish hooks in the wintertime, you know, and I mean, we didn't, now you got such sophisticated yeah. stuff. Of course, we didn't have braid line back then. So there was an Albright. I mean, an Albright was some city in Texas. There are, uh, there are still knots coming out each and every day that people make up stuff, and uh, they're new to us every week, every month. Uh, there's still knots. Personally, and we do this every single day that we don't know and we don't even know how to tie. I'll just be honest with you. Uh, just because we haven't needed to. Like we always said, uh, what's, what, don't. Should we, should we do that again? You yeah, give, again? Him, give him one more time. One more time. Okay. The polymer. Polymer nut. You double up the line, okay? Very simple. Double the line up. Put it through the hook you're going to do. And then, uh, okay, now it's just, there it is. Simple. Now just tie an overhand knot. Tie an overhand knot. Give yourself enough of a loop. We don't normally do it on, on these big big hooks like this. We're using small mono, and it's colored mono, so you can see it. But And then just take the hook and pass it through the loop and pull the loop up over what you just had. There it is right there. You can see the knot. You can see the loop. Okay. Very simple. And you can see the double hook before I, uh, the double line on the hook before I pull it tight. Okay, and then you wet it and watch it pull tight. So you ready? Here we go. One, I'm not putting it in my mouth though. There it goes. And that's all there is to it. The Palmar knot. The Palmar. Been around, been around forever. Now we got a fun one coming up. And uh, I've never, I've seen uh, some of our mates. For example, Dave, he ties this one on the boat. Uh, I never personally tied it till the other day, and it's uh, it's a pretty interesting knot. It's a good knot for uh, for casting plugs. I've tied it all the time. You have, yeah. I'm not I don't gonna, believe. I don't believe. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to tie it tonight. <laughs> I don't believe. But anyways, I refuse to tie. You refuse I feel to like tie. Like Sheldon. I mean, uh, uh, Seinfeld. I, uh, George, <laughs> or, or Seinfeld. I refuse to run something. I remember. Something seeing, like I remember watching my father yeah. a long time ago, but. Uh, like I said, I've watched Dave tie this knot, and it's a very good knot for uh, casting plugs and or even live bait fishing. It lets the whenever, fish swim freely, and I'll, sh I'll demonstrate it in just a second. We'll talk about it for a minute. Uh, whenever you tie a knot like that, you're going to end up with a loop. It's not going to be tied right tight to the hook. So you've got a loop that's going to swing loose in there. Well, what does that mean? It, when, when the line is tied uh, tight to that, the fish has got leverage. So when he shakes and moves, he's got a little bit of leverage. With the loop system, he doesn't get that leverage. Or like when you, like when you said for a plug yeah. or a jig or something like that, it just gives it the freedom to have more motion, so it looks better. You know, but it is a it is a very very good knot. Do we have any questions before we go on, Morgan? Yeah, no. Feel free to answer, ask some questions, guys, as we're going. Uh, we'd love to say hello and talk to everybody. Uh, but uh, someone wants to know when we're starting squid. When we're starting squid. Well, if the weather continues the way it is this winter. Uh, it could be next it, week. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, uh, it could be sometime in April. But historically, it's uh, right around the uh, the beginning of May. Uh, First part of May. Historically. But like we said, the water's... Uh, the, water, the water temperature dictates everything. And as everyone knows, it's been a, a warm, snowless so, winter. So far. That so change, far, but, of course, uh, we could get hammered, but uh, no ice fishing. It's been a terrible. Yeah, we ice fishing. all wanted to go ice fishing, but uh, <laughs> we've been sticking a clam. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, back to knots. If you have any questions, though, don't don't hesitate to ask. Okay. All right, take your main line. Okay. What are we tying? This is so. Oh, the, um, let me go over this. Yeah, this is from what we were told. This is called the Rapala loop knot. Now, this could be called something else when we tie this and demonstrate it to you. This is just what we were told what it's called. Uh, like I said, it could be something else to you. Main line, okay? You got to put an overhand knot in it to start. All right? Just, just a simple a knot. overhand. Simple, simple knot. Don't just pull like it tight. Polymer. I'm going to make this loop big so you guys can see. Simple overhand knot. Don't pull it tight. Take your hook, okay? Through the eye. 
Bring it over here. Yeah, hold that for just a second. Just like that. And that knot you made, your overhand knot, put the main line through. All right. Now you got it through and start twisting. Just like your clinch knot. One, two, three, four, something like that. And then go back through the two loops. All right. I won't tug that in your hand. And cinch that down. Now that knot will not go past that overhand knot, if you understand what I'm saying. That's why you make the there's overhand your, knot. There's your loop, see it? It's a very interesting knot. It gives this hook a lot of free floating freedom. So if you got a piece of bait on there, a live bunker or something, it's not gonna get all it's it's gonna be it's gonna give it some room to play with. Alright? Uh, like I said, one of the mates on the boat ties this and I was very intrigued by this knot. I had never Dave, tied it before. Uh, Dave uh, uses it for blackfish. Mm -hmm. I believe he ties it with blackfish jig. Yeah. It just lets your bait free float. Uh, it gives or it some more plug. movement. Yeah. Or a plug. I or like the like idea with the, with the plug, but I'll, I'll demonstrate it one more time so you guys can see it. You know, Scissor man. The... Scissor man. Scissors. 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 All right, so remember. Big responsibility with the scissors. Simple overhand knot before you start. I think when I took, tried to tie this the other day, I forgot the overhand knot. I'm looking at myself now. What the hell am I doing wrong? I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. All right, so you got your overhand hook. Go through. Pass it to Greg. Remember, go through that first knot you made. All right, I'll, I'll cinch it down a little further. And then start wrapping. One, two, three, four. That's on the main line. Yeah, then go through the two. And simple. Cinch it down. Let it. And what we're told, that is called your rappel loop knot. Uh, and I kind of like it. We're going to try it, uh, I believe, on a couple of uh, couple of different trips this year and just see how it works, uh, especially on maybe a night I bass trip. I think we're going to try it night bass fishing. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. You know, it, it may or may not, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little intrigued by it. And we're going to give it a shot just to see if it works or not. It's got some big advantages. There's no question about it. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Ben, okay. On to the next. Ben says don't run with the scissors. Yeah. <laughs> Benny. Hi, Benny. Larry, Larry wants to know how do you connect a floral carbon to a braided line? Ah, good one, Larry. That, Larry? That's next. Larry, don't worry. We're going to end on that one. Oh, We're going to do it a couple of times just, just so you can see. I've already got it all tied up. But don't worry, it's coming up. we got a couple more about, to go through. How about Snellum? Snellum. Let's do a Snellum. So, so, you want to do it with the. Can we do it with the. Uh, I could try. We're, we got some heavy, some heavy uh, paracord here. I'll see if I can do it. Okay, so snell. Does everybody know what it is to begin with? What 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 a, a snelled hook is? I mean, uh, there's there's certain hooks that that fish better when they're snelled instead of just just putting a simple knot on it. You know, how many times do we see on the boat the knots? I mean, it, you know, that's the whole purpose of this is just to just to pick up two or three of these knots and yeah. and, and practice them and use them. It's important. Some of the stuff we see on the boat, you know, if you can't tie a knot, they tie a lot. And they and, do. And they do tie a lot. And there's, it's, the, you know, the, the Jimmy Half hitches, those don't work. The May knots, well, everybody knows what a May knot is. It may or may not work. But we see it from time and time again. Everybody just ties a couple overhead knots, a couple half hitches, send us to the bottom, they set the hook, and they come back with nothing every single time. So that's why we're demonstrating this for you guys. And you can go back and look at this video and get these down for you because we know them. We want you to know them. But I'll do my best with this line. If it doesn't work, I'll go to the mono for the snell. This isn't the exact hook I'd like to use uh, for a snell. I'd like to use an octopus hook where the eye is a little offset. But I'll do the best I can to demonstrate. So you go through, pull it, pull, give yourself some line through the hook, or through the hole, okay? Then take your, uh, this is going to be tough. It has not any memory. You, you kind of you kind of go make a, make a loop, all right? So you got to mono, just, mono yeah, would mono, stand, have memory. Mono, mono, <laughs> mono would stand off. It has essentially it has you got a, you got a, a little loop there. Take the hook, take the the line, and wrap towards you and then away. One, and then you cross over. Two, three. Oh yeah, this is tough with this. But you just wrap and ascend. Yeah, this is gonna be. I'm gonna have to show mono. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't really cinch this down. It's got to be mono. We'll, okay, uh, we'll do it. We'll do it mono. We try. I, I was hoping to use some heavier gauge line. So you can see it. But we'll go to the mono here. 
unfortunately, for, for anybody that has poor eyes, but like myself. You want to use a small hook? Oh, uh, it don't matter. I could use this. All right, so hook, mono, go through, give yourself enough, and then take your hand and come back over the top so you make a loop. All right? It's a two-part, it's a two-hand process, okay? Bring it over, pinch it both with this line now, with this, all right? And you take your, your loop and start wrapping. One away from you, and then one towards you. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like to go seven, just to keep it honest. All right, so you, then you pinch it off with this hand. This hand is doing a lot, all right? Then you got that little loop that you started with, the initial one. Pull it tight and cinch it down. Like I said, it's hard to demonstrate with such small gauge line on such a big hook, but that's your uh, that's your snell. That's what we use for night bass all the time. Or you kind of see how it, it, looks. it looks. It looks nice and clean. That's the. There's multiple ways to snell. That's the easiest way for me. There's a lot of other guys that snell differently. I'm sure you've been learned. Here, even taught. I'm trying to. Ways. I'm trying to think. I haven't snelled one in about 25 years. Where's our? Where's our I'm trying to think. Give me a snip. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you on an octopus so it lays a little, a little more true. I know it's a small hook, but through the eye. Okay. Give yourself enough. Double it over. Pinch with that hand. All right. Make one wrap away and then one wrap for, tor towards you. You're making an X. One. Two, three, four, five, doing? six, something like that. Then go back to that tag end, pull it through, get a little wet, and that's your snow. Uh, that's one of the many ways to snow. To one of the many ways. Uh, I know, for example, my uncle, he tied, he snails completely different where he doesn't even go through the eye. Uh, but there's many, many different ways. That's very nice. It works. It's, it's helped some fish. Uh, you want to show them how to crimp something, or should I go right to the uh, right to the Albright? Well, we have no more, no questions on it. Nothing. Mm -mm. Nothing more. Oh, Heather's here too. Yeah, she's the CEO. Heather. Say hi. <laughs> 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 or uh, do you want to go right to the uh, the Albright? Or you want to do a little crimp job? To show them. Uh, you can do it at anything you want. All right, oh, we're going to demonstrate the Albright, and I know this is a very it's important very tough. Time. Well, it's easy to show. It's going to be easy to show because I do it every single day. Uh, it's going to be, it is difficult for the customers and you guys, uh, for some people, not everybody, to, to learn this. Uh, but it's, it's pretty simple. If you do A, B, and C right, you'll get it down. You always want to start, well, well I do anyways, there's a couple different ways, but I always start with the mono, okay? You take your mono, double it over, all right? See what I did? Just doubling it over. Pretend this is your braid, okay? So this this is your main line coming off your reel, okay? This is your leader that you're tying, your shock leader, whatever Top you want shot. to call it. Take it. Take your line, go up through the bottom to start, all right? Pull it through and give yourself enough. Then pinch both lines, okay? Both lines with one hand. Take this tag line, your, your main line from your reel, and start wrapping. One... And always wrap away. Two, keep them flush. That's important. Two, three, four, by flush, five, six. By flush, ring after ring after ring. Don't don't lay one on top of them. So mm -hmm. you can do, I mean, you can go, they say eight, nine. I go sometimes even 10, 12. Uh, they say after a certain point it doesn't matter. But I like to keep it safe. So I got eight or nine, 10, 12 wraps, okay? Nice and flush. Then take that main line. So you went up through first, then now you're going up and out this way. Okay, keep them flush. And you always want to cinch it down. Of course, I'm not going to be able to cinch it with this heavy, heavy line, but that's your Albright. That's obviously catching. Yeah, mono to braid. Mono to braid, your top shot. While we're speaking about braid, a lot of people don't realize this. You know, if you take your you take your reel and you don't know that much about braid. You take your reel and they, you take it to certain tackle stores and they fill the whole reel up with braid. That's not what you really want to do. You're just kind of throwing away money. You've got to figure out how deep is the water where you're going to be fishing to begin with. 
if you're only going to be in a race, wilderness, go to Block Island, so maybe what, 200, 225 feet of raid? Yeah, a lot of guys. 250, I mean. A lot of guys, especially you guys, not you guys, I should say that, but a lot of our customers, they get excited. They pack that reel so far, you know, so yeah, tight it's, on. It's just a, it's a waste, though. You can fill the reel up with, with cheap monofilament. Just the backing. Yeah, exactly. And then put the 200, 250, 300 feet of braid on, okay? And then on top, at the end of the braid, you're going to do that knot and put that top shot on there of monofilament, which is going to be 8, 10, 12 feet. We'll demonstrate one more time, okay? So this is your main line. You got your top shot. Take your line, take your main line, or your top shot, I'm sorry, and double it up, okay? Essentially just make a loop, all right? Take your main line, all right? Up through the bottom. Can you kind of see that more? Yeah, I can see. All right, lay it down. Give yourself enough, and then pinch it off with your with your one hand, and take it. Wrap away from the one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll go eight, seven, eight. Okay, nice and flush. Keep them, keep them nice and flush. You you have a do you have a close yeah, up you can see it. To, to see it nice and flush. Take it. Go back through the original loop. Cinch you down. That's your all bright. Of course, it's hard to cinch with this stuff, but then I'll, you always want to tag. You want. Go ahead, we'll see if she holds. It's going to be harder for you than it is me. I got mono. <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty strong, but make sure, don't ever leave those tag ends in your reel. You always want to trim it up. Benny, I'm going to get him with the scissors, watch. And that's your all bright. There you go. Simple, simple, simple. It just takes practice, like anything else. Uh, I was never good at it the first time I tried it. To tell you, uh, I learned at the tackle shop. They taught me the right way to do it, and after practice and practice and practice. You know how he learned it? He learned at it from, from me screaming at him from the bridge when we were bass fishing at night. Get the goddamn thing tied! <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll get it tied. I, I, I don't care! You'll, you'll get it tied when he's yelling at you, trust me. Uh, do you want to show him crimp? Yeah, now, a lot of people. This isn't uh, such. This isn't a knot. This is, uh, but it's a. It's an important me uh, method of fishing, so to say. I I will tell you this. You know, uh, I've done sports shows all across the country. Many of you have uh, have uh, seen us. Uh, you know, with the shark and the fighting chair. You. Uh, we're going to be Philly next week. We're going to be at Philly next week, right? With the we're fighting be, chair. With right? the fighting chair and CJ and myself and everything. And and uh, a lot of you've seen those uh, shows where they have a screen now where you can fight a fish. Mm. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. You put the rod and reel in and the marlin's jumping and everything. Well, we were the originator of it 45 years ago. We started with the, the real deal. And I've tried a tremendous amount of knots. When you've got NFL football players on the end of this rod, the, you know, we're using a, a 130 rod and reel, and we're using line on the reel that you wouldn't use for fishing. This is uh, this is long line line. This is 600 pound test, but this is what we use on the reel for demonstrations. For demonstrations at the show when we're fighting the guy that's in the harness. The point I'm trying to make is I've used an awful lot of types of knots, and I've had an awful lot of NFL full time players doing this, and uh, starting with. Uh, uh, Kevin Gogan from the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know if he's watching, maybe. But, uh, and we've broken a lot of knots, including the Palomar knot that I just showed you. Is that and, so Oh, yeah. I, I broke, and, and I'll tell you, we put a lot of tape on it so that, boy, when you break 600-pound test line with a 300-pound guy, guy on the other end, that line comes back with a vengeance. Believe me. But I've never broken it across the country in 48 states with the crimps, when we went to the crimps. I tried, we, we broke every knot. We started out with 300 pound test line, we break it, went to four, went to five, went to, now we're at six. So it, uh, and we haven't broken it. But anyhow, to, uh, to, to show do, you a crimp, to, to do a crimp, what we do anyhow, this is just your standard, your standard crimp. You, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to squish it so hard that you hurt the line. When you crimp it, you're going to lose 15% of the strength of the line, bit. probably. You're going to lose a little bit, as 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 any knot is, not just not just this. But what what we used to do 
is put that thing through there and uh, we double up on it. Okay? Well, if you can do it with this. I'm doing, I'm doing it at the shows. For the kids, I double it. Yeah. So we, Not that the kids are going to break it, but we do it. We double it up anyway. We, we'd end up just turning it, you know, just doubling it up like that. And then you put the crimp on. Now the crimp is down I'm here. Sliding. Stand by. We would uh, we would put two. You know, a lot of a lot of people are using this. I don't tune the fish anymore, but you certainly do. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you're you're using a lot We're of crimping, this. Yeah, yeah. You know, at times, at certain times, not all the time. That's that's how you do it. You know, for the crimp, and you've got a double. Uh, double width there, uh, you know, and uh, you use a. We got free kids trips at Philly. We'll, we'll hook this. There. We'll hook this hook right around their face and uh, let them run. No, we won't do that. No. We have a nice harness and a belt, and uh, we let the kids try and try and beat the rod, beat the fit, beat the guy. And uh, some kids do. They're they're pretty strong kids. So uh, bring them on down. Uh, if you beat the chair, the kid gets a free fishing trip, right? That's yep. what it is. Come and beat the chair. We look forward to seeing you. What's that? That's a giveaway. Heather wants to say something. Heather, yeah. take yeah. it away, Heather. Heather, take it away. Well, Tell them why. We give, you give away. Go ahead. We, say give away, we give away a free fishing trip every hour of the show for every hour we are there. Uh, you fill your name out, drop in the uh, tank. We do a random drawing every hour of the and, show. And we post the winner every hour. Okay? And everybody that signs up, even if you don't win the trip, you are aware of every winner at each at each day at every hour. So it's uh, we give away a lot of lot there's, of trips. There's a lot of hours while we're down yep. there. And, a lot of uh, hours. You know, you can't win if you don't play. So come on down and see us. We look forward to seeing all you faces. And uh, last thing, I guess, our knife giveaway. No, there's one more thing. Oh, what I got? Wanted, Sorry. I just wanted to, you know. Uh, Sorry, I messed that up. I know this is. Well, I didn't tell you. Oh. Why do you think I have this spot warp over here? Uh, You're right, you didn't tell me. <laughs> well, it's just, I see so many people. How many times do you hear people say, I hung my anchor up and I couldn't get it back and I cut it? Holy God. Don't ever. Don't ever. Never. People do cut it. They do cut it. Can you imagine that? I mean, cleat the thing off. You work it out. You work it out. I mean, I... I, twist, them? Yeah. I twisted and bent a lot of anchors, man, yeah. let me tell you, but I never caught one. I busted them off. Yeah. I put divers down to go get it again. But Even if you have to cut it off, put it on a buoy, come back later, try and work it out. Uh, and, uh, one of the things I just wanted to show you, because this can be used for an anchor line or whatever. This is how to join two lines together. We were talking about knots. I know this yeah. is not... But this is the easiest uh, knot. This is what all the lobstermen use. This is just regular pot warp. Lobster pot, rope. We call it warp. Okay? And this is the easiest knot going. This, uh, we've always referred to this. I don't know what the name of it is. We've always just said it's a fisherman's knot. But you take, if you want to join two pieces of anchor line or uh, a dock line or anything like that with the easiest knot going, just stretch the thing out there, okay? It's laying on top of each other. Then take one end and just tie an overhand knot, okay? Just a, just a regular old overhand knot. There it is. Now you take the other end, and on this end, you, you tie the same thing. You, you tie it a regular, a regular knot, just a regular overhand knot. That's it. Now when that pulls together... Okay, that's going to be as tight as can be, and if I left enough tag in, now if you really want to do it the way the lobstermen do, then you open up the braid, okay, so that it doesn't get caught in a hauler or whatever, and put the, put the tag in through that, okay? Now it ain't going anywhere. But this is, this is such an easy knot. And I, used to, I used to tie that a lot working on the gill netters. Not that I don't want to go work on the gill netters again, but very popular knot. Uh, that was that was always. What a did they thing. call it? You know, I don't even remember. To be honest with you, there is a there is a term for it, uh, but I don't remember. But it's a. You want to do it again? It's it's so it's so freaking easy. Take there's your two lines, right? Jeff Meek says tuck the ends in now. Jeff. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. I caught my first. Don't look at me. I caught my first giant tuna with Jeff Meek. 
Ask him how how heavy was it fifty years, forty five years ago, fifty years ago? I gotta say we went to we went to not school from uh, from Jeff past couple of days. So thank you, Jeff, for uh, we'll give you a little shout out on tonight. Thank you, Jeff, for tie, showing some of this stuff and giving us the proper names. We appreciate tie a, it. Tie a knot, tie a half, just a regular overhand knot. Tie it on the other side. Jeff said it weighed five hundred fourteen pounds. That's exactly it. That's five fourteen. <laughs> There it is, pull it together, okay? And like I said, leave a little bit of the tag in and you can open the braid, open the braid, and put the tag in through there. Of course, then you, you cut that off. But that'll go through the hauler, you know, or windlass or whatever. But uh, easy way of doing it. And you can tie, you can use that knot on line that is, uh, that is different diameters. So if this was three quarter inch, and you had half inch, and it still worked. You know, it still worked. Yeah. Interesting, huh? What are you doing with that hook there? Uh, I thought we would use this for something. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna put her on Morgan's waist. It's probably good. Yeah. I, uh, I would take this to all the shows with me, and people would think with the white shark there that uh, that's well, that's what they used it for, shark hook. But uh, you know. James, James wants to know how about showing how to tie a drop line on a bait rig. A drop line on a bait rig. Like a dropper loop? A dropper loop? I mean, let's see. Yeah, that's no problem. That's real simple. Yeah, all right. Let me let me get my... Dropper loop. That, you know, that's a good one. Why didn't we touch that? I don't know. Let me get my mess straightened out here real quick. Well, What's his straight, name? Well, he's straightened that out. Stefan says... Hi, Stefan. The boat's been going on a big overhaul over the winter. And what's new and exciting for the season coming up? What's new and exciting? Well, you're right. We are uh, doing a lot on the boat. It's uh, mostly cosmetic. Uh, the boat was in need of uh, some serious uh, sandblasting and some painting. And uh, we're getting that done down there. In fact, we went looks, down. Looks the two of us went down. They, I'll say one thing for Director's uh, Shipyard down there in the Marinac. They are a first-class yard. They are, they are top of the line. Yeah, and we did a little video from it, but it's uh, just from you guys seeing the video, what I personally saw when I walked in. Of course, I walked in before he did, and I, first thing I said to the guy was, wow, you guys do a darn good job. And uh, I, shook his hand, I shook his hand, top of the line. So directors, great job. Uh, they, uh, they blasted that boat, and it's, uh, it's going to come out real good. They're going to put uh, barrier coat down because it's aluminum. You first... They're going to put two or three coats of barrier coat down, which you need to put on uh, being an aluminum boat. And then you put the final two coats on, and then on top of that, we're going to put uh, non-skid. So it's going, to be, uh, it's going to be first class. I mean, like everything we do on the black yeah, boat, from tackle to electronics, uh, uh, there's, we, don't, uh, we, don't spare, we don't spare a dollar. We do it the right way. All right, how about a... Uh... How about a dropper, dropper loop? loop. I'll, nice. make the, I'll make the whole high-low rig. How about that? That's what we use from uh, year in, year out. So I always start with, uh, with a sinker loop. Okay, sinker loop, just an overhand knot. I usually go through twice. You know, two overhand knots, come tight on it, and it's just sinker loop. Then you come up a little bit for your bottom knot. Give yourself enough line, depending on how long you how, how long you want your... Uh, how come you got such a long tag in there? Well, I was going to trim it up again. You can trim that down. All right, anyways, two fingers, okay? Overlap them. All right, see what I just did? Bring your hands together. Boom, okay? Then pinch them both of your fingers. See what I'm doing? All right? Then you got to hold them together with your other two fingers. There's a lot of handwork involved. A lot of people try it. A lot of people mess it up. But there's a lot of handwork. you got to kind of use all your hands. And then as you start twisting, one, two... Three, four, five, six, six or seven. You can't let those wraps. I hope they can they see the wraps, Morgan. Yeah, exactly. You can't let those wraps slip through your hand, otherwise you'll lose it. Then take that end, go through that loop you held on to. Come tight. You didn't wet it. Well, yeah, uh, you should watch. wet it. You should wet it. But for demonstration purposes, that's one. Then you go up top a little more. Tony wants to know how far should the loops be. It all depends on what you're fishing for. For porgies. For porgies. I like to, 
in the springtime, um, I like to keep the sinker a little closer to your uh, to your first dropper loop. Boy, that that it that makes does, a difference. That does make a difference, especially in the spring. In the early spring, the majority of those fish are caught on that bottom hook. Yeah, For it's almost like they're picking there. off the bottom. The hot the fish aren't up and high in the water column yet. So in the springtime, I like to go uh, a couple inches, two three inches. So this is a little too far. Sea bass season, uh, six eight inches, perfect. But in the spring, three four inches, somewhere right where my thumb is, very close to the bottom. Uh, and then also, when you're doing your portage rig in the spring, uh, leave it a little closer, the second hook a little closer to that. So six, six, eight inches, you know, give yourself some room. And again, hand, don't let those twists go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bring it through. And then wet it. I was going to say, you didn't I did it. <laughs> And there you have it. That is our porgy killer right there. Now um, you so can, that. you can too, if some people do, is they cut this and then smell, yeah, you can smell the hook yeah. on the other end. Uh, there's you a know? couple of different rigs we tie um, in the spring where it's a, uh, it's almost called a drift rig. We use it a lot in the fall for cod fishing uh, where your, your hook is essentially snelled on the bottom. I guess I can show it real quick while we got a minute if you want. It's, uh, Don't forget what we said last week. Uh, the more popular rigs we see are the ones with the steel, the steel arm coming off. Instead of mono like this, it's the steel. And we see them, we talked about it last week, we see that time and time again yeah, on the boat. It's, it's not the way to go. It's not the way to go. It's the most popular rig we see on the boat as far as rigs go. But when the fishing is tough, they do not catch as good. The fish are aware Operate under the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't use excess snap swivels and steel and anything like that. We use 100% monofilament, okay? And uh, those rigs are just terrible. So when you see them, stay away from them. Get a, get a complete mono rig. You will catch better. Now, if it's suicidal, yeah. it doesn't make any difference. No. I mean, when we got them onto the boat and it's two at a time as fast as you, it, 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 it doesn't make a difference. But, boy, when the fishing's tough, and it's picky when you get one guy or two guys that got the right rig that are picking away at them, you know, and, and guys with the uh, steel are standing there watching saying, what the hell's he doing, you know? But uh, anyhow, not to interrupt. Uh, I'll guys. demonstrate this one last rig right here and then we'll move on. But uh, this is a popular rig in the spring and in the fall where cod fishing or whatnot. But uh, snelled hook always to start, okay? Like I demonstrated earlier, snelled, give yourself enough, overlap, pinch. Go wrap away from you once, then towards you again. Make an X. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pinch it off. Pull through. Wet it. Okay, there's your snell. Clean it up. All right. Then, so essentially, instead of a sinker loop down the bottom, then you go to a dropper loop again, okay? And give yourself six, eight inches from that hook to your dropper loop. All right, dropper loop. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dropper. So now essentially, this first dropper loop in the spring is going to be your sinker. All right, and then go back up, make another one. One, oh. Come on, get in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come through. All right, so there's, there's a hook on this end. This, your first one. This one's got the sinker on it. All right, so this trailing hook is on the bottom, on the, on the bottom as it's sitting there. And those fish, either on anchor or when we're drifting, especially in the spring, they want to eat off that bottom. So they're going to pick this bottom hook up. First, we notice that works very effectively in the uh, in the spring months. So instead of you so sinker on the bottom, two hooks, you got a hook, sinker, hook. Keep that in mind. Hook, sinker, hook. I mean, they like to see that uh, that rig in the springtime too, especially up in Pecanic Bay when they're up there spawning. I like to use that rig. Anyways. Nice uh, snell job. Yeah. I like it. So one of the many ways to snell. There's many, many ways. Got a lot of spit on this one. Not good, as it should. You want it to cinch. Good. Okay. Onto the knife. 
Or do you have something else you'd like to add? I'm, uh... I'm Onto the knife! I'm done. <laughs> Onto the knife. All right, so as you guys know, we give away a Dexter knife. Uh, thank you, Dexter Russell, for doing this for us. If it's not a Dexter, it's not a knife. We give away these every, uh, every Thursday night when we do these, every seminar, and we have a question. And I know we've had a couple of issues with the answers and uh, whether who gets it first, who doesn't get it. We do. We do. You have to understand, folks, we're, we're doing the best we can here, okay? I don't understand thoroughly at my age how uh, this texting works and uh, blueberries and blackberries and strawberries and whatever kind of other berries there are on these phones. But uh, we're, we're just, bear in mind, we're doing the best we can. So when we, we give you the question, we, we try to get, we try to the best of our ability to get to the first person that, uh, that answers it correctly. And that's why Heather is here, to uh, ensure we do it properly or to try. At least hope know. so. At least hope so. All right, let me see if I can get my vocabulary right. Uh, what is the, uh, the species of fish... That is required, uh, let's see here. Required under federal law. Required under federal law. Not state, federal law. That uh, it, you have to use a circle hook while bait fishing, fishing for them. Did I say that right? That's correct. That's good. What, is That's the, uh, what is the species of fish? Do we which have? No, which number? We We're going to go number five again. So take your time, get number five right. Uh, Don't take your time. Text it in quick, and we're going to. Hopefully do it works bed. out. Um, and we're giving away four. a. Uh, I'm on five right now. Eight inches, isn't it? Oh, seven inch. I'm sorry. Seven inch. Jeff. Stainless, nice. Jeff Meek, you're not going to win. Jake, you're not either. Jake, you're not either. Go all the way up and see. Here we go. I got that one as five. One, two. But that's. These were first. Do, 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 do. Less. 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 Less was number five. Less. Less who? No. No, he was not. Less. Less, you don't be. I'm kidding. Congratulations, Less. You can add this to your arsenal. You can cut up all that that funky bait you bring in the fall when I pick on you when you drag all that stuff down in your cooler. <laughs> but uh, this would be perfect for you. But congratulations, Les. Well, uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to send an email to us, Les? Right, is that what yeah, send us your address. We're going to try to work something else out where we give these away at the dock, come down to the dock in the season, because the uh, to send these through the mail, we got, we got, we got questioned once. You know. Well, Les is local. You could drive down yeah. if you wanted to. Okay. Congratulations, Les. And uh, like we said, we look forward to seeing everybody in Philly that's, next week. That's it for today. We'll give you an uh, update on the boat, and things are coming along good. We're looking forward to it. It's uh, just right around the corner. And uh, great job tonight. Great job. You're, uh, you're really the You mind. as well. Good yeah. job on the clearing grounds tonight, too. Yes, yes. You improved. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah you improved. improved. Yep. We're, uh, okay. we're going to get back to the clearing grounds maybe tomorrow or the next day. But uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week and at the show. Folks, take care, okay? Thank you very much.